this is Riley Davison, and you are listening to Bravo Zulu Radio, and I am extremely excited about tonight's program, because in the house, I do have the Sonny Melendres. Sonny, thank you for being here. Thank you very much, and congratulations on the show. I understand that uh, you're about to uh, to do the, the, the this the uh, going to be a one-year anniversary, right? That is right. So when uh, today's Wednesday the 14th, uh, it'll air on, on Saturday night uh, the 17th, and that'll be the final night of my first year contract. Wow. And so after that, I'll be beginning my second year in radio. Well, I'm honored to have been a guest on your show twice in the same year. Yes, sir. Well, there's a reason why you're here, I and mean, one of the uh, there's actually a couple of reasons why. Is you're there here. like a hidden camera somewhere? Uh, no, well, it, it, just the one that's being focused on you right now. <laughs> so, uh, basically, I mean, like I said, I'll be starting my second year on uh, on the radio, and I was talking to a gentleman uh, by the name of Baron Wiley, who I think you know very well. That's right. All right, so he helped me get my start here at this radio station, and then he was telling me that you actually helped him get his start in radio. I did. So, in essence. Three different ways you helped me get my start on oh, radio. Oh, is he there? <laughs> if Baron Wiley had never come into the picture, who right. knows? He may never have been here. That's right. And, and you would have been, uh, you know. Uh, who knows? Just a low yeah. real estate broker, yeah. an insurance adjuster. That, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so because I listened to you when I was younger, and, and you've been around for a long time, a, a, uh, a pillar of the radio community, as it were, here in, uh, here in San Antonio. And then through Baron, he helped me get my start here. And so I just wanted to do like a tribute to you and, and to uh, and to help, you know, to help you understand the benefit that you've been to the community and to myself. Um, Bravo Zulu it stands for a job well done. And I think that's what you've done all, all these years. And I just wanted to, to pay you tribute. Wow. Riley, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. If we could just stop the show right here, <laughs> then, then I'd, be, I'd be thrilled. Can't do that because <laughs> I really want you to. We are in a position in the country, and I don't. I don't imagine you're a political man. No, no okay. I, I stay away from uh, from politics. Right. Well, so I was going to I was going to ask you about the Supreme Court or the election. I, and all let me just tell you this one thing. <laughs> I've never mentioned this on the air. Oh, okay. Um, I've had many a, a politician uh -huh. and public servant come to me. Uh, when they're running for office, asking me to either endorse them, right. MC one of the rallies, and everything else, right. and, and I've always told them the same thing. I said because I'm in the media, um, I'm not. I don't. I don't choose sides before the election. Once you're elected, <laughs> once you're elected, I'm all for you. Then. I'm, I'm all for you because I, because now you're you're a servant of, of the city, right. and, and I feel like I belong to the city as well. Right. Absolutely, yeah. And, well, and I'm a I'm apolitical. I really don't. Uh, not that I don't have my own uh, opinions of, of what happens and what's going on, but as far as getting involved in the muckraking and the dirt throwing and all of that, I understand. I don't, yeah, I don't have any 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 business for that. So good for you. Yeah. So so I'm not going to press you on those spots, but I do <laughs> want. I've been really the past several uh, past several shows uh, for many weeks now concentrating on the nonprofits here in San Antonio and the surrounding communities and the good that they're doing and so I just wanted to have the, the opportunity to, to thank you really because you were one of the very first people that agreed to be on my show and and uh, and to be subjected to uh, that and you lent in essence by doing so you lend your uh, credence and credibility and so I wanted to thank you oh well it's an honor believe me and I thank you very much as well okay so without Speaking about the political ramifications or anything like that, yeah. we are definitely in. Uh, now we've been in COVID for several months, and 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 now we have a, a presidential election coming up. Uh, there are racial turmoils. Tell me how we help the community. What do we do to to uplift people's spirits, to give them uh, the strength and the vigilance that they need in order to move forward and to to be better off after this election? Well, you know, here's the thing. There are so many things that uh, that can be done, uh, and many things that are not being done, and I think that we lead by our example. Right. That's really the, taking action towards the goal of a better for all is is really what's more important than anything else. And everyone can help in every single way, even if it is just a gesture of kindness. In fact, I'd go even further, even if it's a thought of kindness. Because oftentimes we don't take we take for granted how much power we yield with a simple smile, Absolutely. with an encouragement, and that could be to a certain stranger. 
Right. You know, my favorite, um, my favorite quote of all time um, comes from a philosopher in the first century named Philo of Alexandria. And he said, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a great battle, right. especially nowadays. Now we're all fighting this gigantic battle, right. but at the same time, everyone has a burden. And why wouldn't we be kind to each other? Because we're all here to help each other. Right. Well, there's many stories out there to, uh, to illustrate your point. And I know one in particular that I remember hearing about was a, uh, a young gentleman at a college, uh, brand new, and he, and he dropped his books and in the concourse and, and, a, and one guy ran over and, and helped him yes. as opposed to continuing to make fun of him as everyone else had. Right. And he went on to be valedictorian several years later. And, and I can't speak to the veracity of this story right now mm -hmm. because I, I just remember it. And he went on to become valedictorian and he sought that, that one gentleman out. He said, you don't understand. I had just failed a test. I was, um, you know, as a freshman, I was doing terribly. I was away from my home. And I was actually on my way to commit suicide. And, oh. and, and as opposed to doing that, you helped me realize that there was a, you know, there was a reason to continue. That's beautiful. Yep. You know, they say that uh, one gesture of kindness touches 50 people. It reverberates. It's, right. it's like, uh, you know, throwing a pebble into, a, into the lake and then you see those, those ripple effects. But the thing is, every one of us with one gesture like you just mentioned, can go so much farther and we will we'll have an impact that we may ne never even know about. Right. I'll, I'll give you an example. I was in my car uh, a couple of years ago and I was listening to uh, one of these talk shows where they talk about restaurants and they either say something good about it or something bad about it, uh, what they liked or didn't like. And this lady called in, it was like about one o'clock in the afternoon. She calls in and she says, I was just at the Bill Miller over on Petranco and it was lunchtime and it was a big line and there was a little lady behind in front of me little old lady and when she got up to order she didn't understand the format of the restaurant and the uh, the young lady behind the counter explained to her one by one picking out every single thing on the menu saying we have this or you can have this and I expected that the second half of the story this woman was was telling was going to be, can you believe that they made us wait that long in the middle of, of a rush hour for lunch? Right. That's not what she said. She said, once she was through, everyone in line was to so taken by the, the kindness and the generosity of this employee that we gave her an applause, we applauded her. Wow. And I have told that story since that happened I can't tell you how many times, not only on the air, but also in my speaking. And so there have been people who have heard the story and they are then driven to kindness. Right. You know, we touch three people whenever we do something kind. It's the person who receives it, the person who gives it, and the person who's watching. That's awesome. And it could be more than uh, just uh, the people oh, who are watching. Oh, yeah, at least, yes. Right. So, the and that's one of the things I'm going to uh, I'm going to bring into this show is really that impact, like you were saying, is that there's no telling down the road how many people we can help and and, and touch just by a simple gesture, just and, by this conversation, right? And that's the entire purpose and yes. point of this of this program. Now you mentioned there were things that were not being done at this point in our country. What what would some of those be? Well, you know, there's always room for improvement, and we certainly have uh, so much to, uh, to be grateful for, but at the same time, we have also uh, so much to, to, to fight for. Right. And when I say fight for, I don't mean uh, in war, I mean as far as upholding what, uh, what people who've gone before us have, uh, have done. Right. I had a, a, a woman who told me that uh, when she was a college student, um, this was back in the, uh, I wanna say the 50s, early 60s, Mm -hmm. She went to um, the Majestic Theater, she was African American, and they were not allowed to come in through the front entrance. Mm -hmm. And every afternoon, every Sunday afternoon, as a protest to this, she would get in line, stand in line, and then go up to when they were going to let her in, and they wouldn't let her in. And she'd be there the next Sunday, the next Sunday. Well, one Sunday, 
they let her in. <laughs> and so her it's action, perseverance. yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But her action and her example, you can imagine the people in line, uh -huh. uh, various thoughts that would go through their minds about, about this young lady. And, uh, and it, indeed, you know, it, it meant that the times were changing Right. And we're certainly not to where we're supposed to be as right. far as all equality is right. concerned. But at the same time, here's somebody who was actually doing something. Mm -hmm. Great men, you have to uh, you have to either ride the wave or create the wave, one or the other, right? It's true. Yep. So, and then you reminded me of something that uh, somebody asked me. How did you do that? Because Ken's Five uh, did a promo uh, feature on me for the... Uh, uh, for the Great Day SA program. Yes. And uh, yeah, Clark Finney, fantastic lady, and, and uh, so she she highlighted me on there. And, and they said, well, how did you get that done? And I said, well, the same way everything everything good gets done. It's providence, right? right? Strategy, right? And then perseverance. And yeah. passion, that's right. <laughs> passion, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and that's something that I always, basically always had too much of, and everybody's always trying to say, okay, Riley, hold it back, you know, rein no, it in. No, no, <laughs> no, you, you, you do not want to apologize for being enthusiastic. Right. You know, enthusiasm comes from the Greek, in theos, in spirit, the spirit oh. within. Right. So when we are enthusiastic, we are letting that spirit out. And it's a spirit we're all born with. You know, I've got a um, uh, two grandchildren. One is uh, four and the other one is uh, six months old. And they are both full of joy. Right. And it cannot be underestimated. Exactly. Right. And see, that's who we are born as. Right. And we get kind of programmed along the way. There are the lucky ones like you and myself who, uh, who never lose that. Right. You know, right. uh, I, the, uh, the, the, the relatability to a child's enthusiasm to me is just as strong as it was when I was that child. Right. Well, I do think that there are some people that have that tendency not to stand. They, they do just almost automatically see the glass half, glass half empty. I do, but you know what? <clears throat> Here's the thing. It can be overcome. But it goes back to that, that um, you know, there but for the grace of God go I. Absolutely. And we don't know. Everyone has a story. Right. And, and many of these stories are tragic. Right. And if that was uh, us, we'd probably be the same way. Right. So you really can't automatically uh, blame somebody right. uh, for you know for their lack of enthusiasm right. or their lack even their their lack of uh, of being um, an extrovert or an introvert. Right. You know most people are introverts. There are more introverts in the world than there are, yeah. and it's only because. They didn't, there's no school that teaches you how to be an extrovert. I had to learn the hard way uh, in, in what I do. Uh -huh. uh, and but because I've been on a stage, either behind a microphone and behind, in front of a camera, right. uh, all my life in front of now with, uh, with my speaking engagements, and, and there's no going back. Right. Once, once you get to that point where it's okay, you're not going to die. No one, <laughs> no one has ever died of a, of embarrassment, you know, or or or, uh, or you know, being an. Well, they may have felt like they were going to. That's right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, well, one, I think one of the best performances of performers that I ever saw, and he didn't, it wasn't doing it that way. It was um, his name was Andy, and, and it was for the Boy Scouts. And when he would take the stage. I would wonder, and then he would do skits or presentations or what have you. Yeah. And I would wonder, what is it that he does that makes him so good? Short guy, you know, wasn't physically commanding or anything. And I would wonder, you know, what is it? And finally, one day I realized, you know what? He's not afraid to look silly. Right. You know, he's, at, he's willing to put himself out there, and that makes him genuine, and that makes him fun to be around. Yeah. They say that the day you grow up is the day <laughs> you learn to laugh at yourself. That's really the best advice I ever received was don't take yourself too seriously. Right. Oh, th well, that's the second thing my mom used to say. She would always say that, you know, don't, don't take yourself yeah, so seriously. come on. And then there but for the grace of God go I. Yeah. Because, and she would, she would point out those things, those people sure. and what have you. I went to a, uh, the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce did a, um, a memorial, not memorial, but a, uh, it was a memorial for a year having the concept of this program and on my way to receive that ribbon and, and ribbon cutting ceremony and everything, I passed by this man that was that was, you know, completely down and out in front of Morton Steakhouse and, 
And I thought, wow, you know, that's exactly what uh, punched through my mind there. But for the grace of God, go us. True. And we've got to make sure that whatever we do, especially it's become so absolutely you know, ingrained in my mind, dealing with the nonprofits and what have you, to realize that, that the underpinnings of our society, they, they're gone. And that these people are really, they're out there and they are picking up the, uh, the pieces of the society and, and, and putting these things back together again. And from you know, uh, pregnant, unwed mothers to you know, the children that are, that are in problems. And, and there's a whole host of situations that they deal with. And they are really, they're out there and they are holding up our society and they're, they're doing so much. And it's, it's quite a burden to them for their, you know, their, their uh, involvement in this part of the community. Well, there's so many people in San Antonio. I, I truly believe that San Antonio is one of the most giving cities uh, in the world, not just the country, but the, but the world. I don't know if you remember this, but back in the, uh, the late 90s, there was a, a big storm and a tremendous amount of flooding that uh, was going on. In fact, uh, I think about 17 people died in these low water crossings. And Down a lot of people lost their homes. Five corners, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I was over at, uh, at Magic 105 at the time, uh -huh. and we decided that we were going to have a, uh, a full day where people can bring uh, any kinds of, of goods, uh, perishables, uh, or I should say uh, canned goods, etc. You know, furniture, anything that would help many of these families who, in some cases, lost their homes. Right. And our, our goal, we were down at the, uh, in fact, we started out at, uh, at 6 a.m., and I hosted the, the whole day uh, from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., and we were at the, underneath the big sign, what used to be uh, Central Park Mall. Uh -huh. And from the very beginning, uh, we saw these two sets of headlights of cars coming and making their donations. They would pull up, they would give us all the things we'd put up, and our goal was to fill an HEB semi, uh, at least one semi, and to uh, raise about $5,000 and to get a 25 pints of blood, because we had the Red Cross uh, on site as well. Well, there was a time about noon, and there was never ever a time where there was a lull in the traffic. It was always two sets of cars coming. Right. And there was a, a time around noon that day that to me epitomized what our city was all about. There were two cars side by side. One of them had a lady who had come from the Dominion. And uh, she didn't even get out of her car or anything. She just pointed to the back. She says, in the back. And we, <laughs> we, we, we opened, uh, hello. We, op we opened the back door and, and the, 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 uh, the door of her car. And there was some linen that was neatly packaged by probably one of her uh, servants or whoever. <laughs> and, uh, and so we, we, we said, thank you very much. And we took that. Next to her was an old beat up station wagon, Riley. And in it were six hands coming out from the windows holding an old mattress on the top of the station wagon. This family was giving something Right. And to them, that meant a lot, this, this mattress. Right. And at that point, both of those people, both of those cars, both of those human beings, mm -hmm. uh, they were all in the same city and all for the same cause and all with the same heart. Right. And in the end, we ended up filling 19 semis. 19. HEB had to keep, it was like the cavalry was coming. They kept <laughs> bringing them up, bringing them right. on. And we raised $50,000. In fact, we had $45,000 with 15 minutes to go. And uh, remember, Mike Delagarza from HEB came and gave us a check for the extra $5,000 to make it $50,000. And donated were 125 pints of blood. Okay. Now, that's, that's a generous city. Right. Well, this is Riley Davison, and you are listening to Bravo Zulu Radio. And I have to admit, I am standing on the shoulders of the great Sonny Melendres. Please. Not hardly. Please stay tuned uh, for the second half of the show. Coming right up. Well, this is Riley Davison, and you are listening to Bravo Zulu Radio. And I thank you so much for doing so. And again, in the house, we do have the great Sonny Melendres. And I'm just uh, very excited to have him here. So here's something that they didn't realize around here until yesterday. And I brought it up. I said, hey, guys, I think that this might be kind of important. But so Saturday night, when, my, when this show airs... Yes. It will have been 
the anniversary of the of this radio station. This radio station started out October the seventeenth in nineteen forty seven. Now see that's something I didn't know. Yes. Really? Yes, sir. Wow. So that it's gonna a, be a special night. It is, I and, think so. And yeah. Who's on the air by Riley <laughs> Davis? <laughs> that's yeah. Right. That's right. So everybody, you know, nobody uh, nobody realized that. So that's I wonderful. brought that out. Yeah. It is. It and it's a it's a significant point, I think, not only for the radio station here in town. Oh but, yes. But also for you know the people that are involved in it, and we're growing and, and uh, really excited about that. It'd be interesting to see all the different formats that the station has had these, right. these call letters, right? And you know, it's, it's a lot of people think that a radio station, when you when you buy a station, um, you're buying the building that goes along with the station. But a lot of times, stations move from time to time. They, the call letters are the ones really that's what you're buying, right. and then the studio is a separate type of thing, right? So um, it's yeah. really a, it's really a monumental. Well, KLUP, it's been from Hispanic to uh, oldies. Uh, I know my mom used to listen to it when they called it K Loop, and now 9:30 a.m. the answer. That's right. And so as I was talking to Baron, he told me what the uh, the last song when it when it transferred from a music station to a talk radio in 2004, if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, he said the last song that played. What, what do you think it would be? Uh, the last song by Edward yeah. Baron. <laughs> no, no, it was um, uh, "My Way" by Frank Sinatra. Oh, perfect, yeah, yeah. perfect. So yeah, we're gonna absolutely. we're gonna play that in the show. So that's so really, I am excited to be here. I'm, I'm excited that you helped me get my start. I'm excited to uh, 9:30 a.m. the answer for for allowing me to get started. I'm not sure if you remember. I'm sure you do the stuttering and the stammering that that I, I produced in that very first show that you helped me with. You know, it's like swimming. You, you're so afraid to go in the deep end, but once you learn how to swim, <laughs> right. they can't keep you out of the water. Yeah. And once that's, a broadcaster, always a broadcaster. There you go. And you are now a broadcaster. <laughs> I appreciate that. That was the first time anybody said that. You were the one that said that. You're, you're now a broadcaster. So you went to SAC, and uh, and Albert went to SAC with the, with the producer today, and then Baron went to SAC, and, and then I can say that I am now in, involved at SAC. And, and, oh, you uh, are? I am, what yeah. Are you, what are you doing there? Well, I had... Uh, because of my motorcycle accident, I never, uh, never got my degree back way back when, uh -huh. and um, so I had decided, uh, you know, with, through my job that I was going to go back and and try and pursue that degree, and so I was I was actually in a bat, uh, bachelor's, uh, uh, master's dual track program, business, and the whole nine yards, yes. and, and just got so bogged down with it full time, you know, working full time, and the family, and then the radio program, and I thought, you know. I'm not really learning anything. What I'm doing is, is regurgitating stuff that I already know in order to in, in order to make the professors happy. Well, radio and TV and broadcasting is really what I want to do. So I pulled out of that the, the uh, school that I was involved with and said, no, I'm going to go to SAC and I'm going to I'm going to you you know do something where I can learn you know the craft that I that I really love. Are you uh, working? Uh, are you also taking classes and going to the the uh, the Gene Longworth Building? Well. Um, you know, there are no classes. I mean, there. Well, I know that no, online. I, yeah, yeah. But I, mean, I mean, I, I haven't so, been back to so the. So this to, is this is during COVID that you that you went back. So I'm right now. No, I'm doing I'm doing it right now. Oh, yeah. good for you. Yeah, good for you. Mass yeah. communications. So they they threw me into, you know, the you know uh, communications 101. So yes, no, yeah. absolutely. Let me tell you something. Uh, I am also involved at SAC. Oh, uh huh. I am actually a community engagement consultant, uh, working with the president's office. Awesome. President uh, Robert okay. Bella. Right, so uh, you're at the top and I'm way at the bottom. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just so proud. You know, we say SAC proud. Um, that's a hashtag at SAC. Right. And uh, what's going on there, and I don't know if you know who Ken Slavin is. I can't say that I do right now. Well-known singer both here in San Antonio but also nationally. Okay. But he's also a crack PR person, and he has come on board as the director of communications wow. for San Antonio College. Uh -huh. And so I'm now working with him uh, with all kinds of various projects as well. That's awesome. But my beginnings were at San Antonio College, right, right. as you probably know. Well, you told uh, me the, the story about the, the window. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. exactly. Uh, seeing that little window as I was walking, I had already taken all of my classes, and I, it was registration day, and I was really excited. Was just, I was the first person in my family to go to college. Right. And I saw this little square window, and I'd seen a window like that before at a radio station, in fact, mm -hmm. at KONO when I visited. And I looked in, and I saw this incredible sight. It was a, 
a radio station control board. Right. And I asked one of the uh, maintenance people, what was it? What, what is that? And they said, well, that's the radio TV department. I said, radio TV department? He says, yeah. You can get a degree in radio TV. <laughs> right. Oh, my yeah. God. So I made right. a beeline for the phone booth. I spent my bus money making a call to my dad, asking right. him if I could change my major. He said, yes. Yeah. And so I did, and I've never looked back. Yeah. No, and it is because there are so many people that you can help through it. I mean, in essence, you're using invisible radio waves in this situation or you know, by video or YouTube or TV or what have you in order to take a message, craft it, you know, pass it on, touch right. people's lives. Right. I did an interview when we went. I took my family to uh, Corpus Christi and we were at the beach and it was actually in December of 2019. And... We were at the uh, Dairy Queen, and I couldn't help but hear this uh, this family, you know, have a discussion. And I, I stood up. My my wife was just no, and she tried to stop me from doing it. And I said, you know, I can't help but hear what you're talking about. And they were talking about the election coming up, and and uh, you know this and that, politically speaking. And and as I was talking to the gentleman, he said, and, and I, I questioned him. I said, did you mean what you said? And he said, yes, film has had, you know, different films that I've seen has had more of a dramatic impact on my life than any politician that has ever been in office. It's true. Yeah. It's true. I want to give you a couple of uh, couple of documentaries you've got to watch. Have you, okay. Do you have Netflix? Uh, yes. Sir. Okay. You've got to see um, A Social Dilemma. Okay. A Social Dilemma. All right. And the other one is um, my... Uh, my teacher, the octopus. Okay, uh, it is. It, they're both incredible. One of them, it really talks, speaks to the fact that our phones, you know, Alexa, who knows who, what, who's listening. But our, how many times have you had a conversation with someone, and then you go on your phone and you were talking about maybe uh, Steinmart, and on your phone there's an ad for Steinmart. Right. Well, that's not by accident. No. When, when you watch this. Right. Uh, it'll, it'll just blow your mind. Right. The other one, the, the, the octopus, uh, this photographer, he's a marine photographer, he spent a year in, uh, off of South Africa in the, um, in, the, in the beautiful waters there, and he, had a, he, he actually was studying this, this octopus. Mm -hmm. And he starts out by just putting his camera there and letting the octopus go and touch the camera. Right. And then day after day, he comes, and finally one day the octopus touches his finger. And that goes on and on and to the point where then the octopus now is nuzzled on his chest, all underwater. No and because he didn't use any kind of, uh, of tanks, air tanks, right. uh, he was snorkeling, so he would have to hold his breath. And he would be in a moment where, oh my God, I, I, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, you know, this, this moment has to last longer right I, I can't go up for, for air you know wow. but he but he would, he would stay down there but it's the most incredibly beautifully done um documentary That's and then there's another one we watched last night by um uh, david At, uh, Atten, attenborough uh -huh. and it's about the planet earth so if you look at those up right. you'll uh, i think you'll be very impressed i've heard of the uh, the attenborough one and uh, that's uh it's quite a. It's a series, right? Uh, no, no, this no. was this was a, a, a one hour. I want to say one okay. hour. It may have been ninety minutes. Right. But you know, he's ninety five. Right. And right. he's been a journalist. Uh, he's been doing documentaries all his life, and he basically is showing us what what we have done to the planet, right. but also his vision for the future. Uh -huh. And see, that's that's where that's nothing excites me more than optimism. Right. Well, and, and isn't that the secret? Because you know, when we talk about glass half full, glass half right, empty, right. you know, if you don't have that vision for the future, um, there's actually several things that you've said that are biblical in nature to, to today. The, if you don't have that vision for the future, then what's it all about? There's no meaning to it. Exactly. And you know what? It's, it's a choice. You know, um, Albert Einstein used to say that he would wake up every morning and he would ask himself the question, do I live in a hostile universe or a friendly universe? And every morning he chose friendly. Right. And it's there for all of us. Right. And I'll tell you something, for many it is so difficult because we weren't raised that way. Right. 
you know, like I say, it goes back to that, you know, you, you never know where someone came from. Right. But once you taste the fruits of that positive thinking, there's nothing like it. Right. Giving, you know, giving keeps going. And good yeah. things happen to people who think good thoughts, do good things, and are grateful along the way. Right. Now, you made that, uh, that point about Einstein. Isn't it incredible, then, that the, you know, he chose to live in that friendly universe, and yet the research that he had done and, and, the, and the invention that was taken from his, uh, from his studies was then used in such a way as it was? It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. When you expect that good things are happening, that's when they start to happen. You, it's almost like you're you're putting in the order, you know. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the chef, the universal is, order, the yeah. chef is God, and, and he, you know you get the menu. You say, "Well, I'll take one of these. I'll take one of these," or, right. or you can say, "No, I'll, I hate that. No, I'm not eating that. I'm not eating that." And that's right. that's what comes out. <laughs> well, when you ask, okay, what is it? Can I do? You know, what is it? Not just what can I get. You know, I was actually thinking right. about that. You know, there, there's that way of give and get, and and I was thinking in. In these terms, I was thinking, well, you know what? You have to get first. But these gets are you have to get up and you have to get going. There and you, you have go. to get ready to yeah, serve. Yeah, I like that. Yeah? I like yeah. that. No, it's, it's very true. You know, we, 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 tend to, we tend to think that when we pray, uh, we get something because we're asking for something. But prayer is actually listening. And, and sometimes the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and some of the best uh, some of the best answers that we can receive are no. That's true. You know the um, what is it that song the you know uh, the prayers never answered or something to that effect. I can't remember. I have to look it up for the for the show. Yeah. So some of the some of the best things are prayers not answered. You know? That's true. So, it just means we, that uh, because we think we know what we want right. and what we need and, and we we really don't. That's true. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. So, where do we go from the future? I mean, or where do, you said you were talking about the vision for the future. Where do we go now? I mean, because we do have, I mean, on the horizon, we have some national sh earth-shaking events come, you know, that are being played out. Where do we go for the, how do we get there where we need to go? Well, we have to have, first of all, hope. We have to have optimism, but we also have to have action. Right. And, and that, that, you know, that positive action, and really, to think about it, you know, besides what it is we leave our children uh, with, what we do for, to the planet, uh, what we do for each other, uh, the the habits that we leave our children with, the optimism, the hope, the the drive, the passion, if they see that in us, we are the role models. We're the ultimate role model, no matter what. And when we're doing that, we're leaving them really the greatest legacy uh, that we can. Right. And it's not about material uh, things. Well, you know, I, I started to say it earlier, and then we got talking on something else, and you were talking about the enthusiasm. And, and so I truly believe in enthusiasm because I know, especially in my case, that great enthusiasm can overcome lack of talent. <laughs> that's true. That's <laughs> so, true. And, and, and those, that's what I've seen in people is that I'd rather be um, around somebody that's really enthusiastic about what they're doing and passionate, mm -hmm. like you said, as opposed to somebody that has that, you know, talent, then because a lot of times the talent is is turned inward, as opposed to what it needs to be. Good point. George Bird used to say that he would rather be um, someone who who did something he, was, he loved, who was a failure at something he loved, than a success at something he hated. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and uh, that's funny because you said that, and, and I was talking to my uh, one of my sons and. And I mentioned, and I said, well, uh, I said, well, here's the quotation. And, uh, and he said, well, you, and I said, but the, that quotation was taken out of context. And he said, Dad, I can this for you. All quotations are taken out of context. <laughs> 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 so I said, okay, well, so now my favorite quotation comes from my son. You know, um, but yeah, no, ever since my mom, uh, going back to 1974, I have a book where I actually signed it and... The, the pages are brittle. You can barely turn it, and they they, mm. they want to fall apart. Mm -hmm. But it's a book of quotations. Mm. And so I actually started preparing for this back in 1974, believe it or not. Think about it. Yeah. 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 You've prepared for this your whole life. Right. Because that's what that's what radio is. And, you know, uh, as much as we have, like right now, your your beautiful daughter, Hannah, is, is doing a video yes, of, of the show, radio, to me, is still the most magical medium. Right. 
And, and even though we think that radio has changed, it hasn't. It's just the delivery system has changed. Right. It's a podcast. It's a uh, recording. It's, it could be something playing off your, your computer. Anytime you're listening to something and your imagination is engaged right. in what it is you're listening to, that's radio. Right. And radio is, is just an incredible... That's why um, I believe that, that radio is so much more powerful than television right. because of that and you can have a million people listening and a million different pictures right. going on in their minds. Right. Well, didn't television make us lazy? I mean, in essence, it, it got it people that did. It, it did. people don't have to think anymore. It's all presented yeah. for them. And then you take it take it that one step farther. If you look at the the films noir, you know, with the uh, um, N O N O I R, where, where those films in the the forties and the yes. they were filmed, they yes. were slow, yes. they were dramatic, yes. they were dark, uh, dark yeah. for a reason. And and that I'm taking film cinema the no, appreciation, yes. but. You know, they were done that way for a reason. If you look at it now, it's all... Oh, it, they show you everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not only show you, but yeah. it's, it's, it's split second. Can you imagine it, you know? if Alfred Hitchcock had made Psycho today? Right. We'd right. see everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'd be it, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. you know? You just throw the red paint at the, at the yeah. camera and, and yeah. then just, you know... Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It really is. But... It's taken, if you look at, at our children, that's why you know, you know the uh, hypertensive disorders and the right. rest of it, well, we've, right. we've done it. We've done it to ourselves. We've done it with the food that we eat and the, you know, the greed that goes into taking food out of food and, and start, uh, putting other things in yes. and then serving that. And then the same thing we're doing to the, with the media, the, the taking away the ability to think as you're going along and instead... You know, giving everything there, putting it all in, and then doing it in such a, a dramatic and uh, ramshackle fashion where the the video is just, you know, constantly it's cut, 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 cut. And yes. Attention span has gotten shorter and shorter. That's right. And the other thing is we, we're missing out on life. Right. You know, we, we right. carry these phones with us everywhere we go. And think about it, you know, in your in your hand... You've got a radio station, a television station, mm -hmm. a newspaper, a telephone, oh, yeah. a camera. I mean, you've got everything right here. Who would have thought Maps. that we'd have that? Right. You know, and with all the, the different apps, etc. So it's real easy to get lost and get so connected to this device right. that, uh, you know, if, I'm sure this has happened to many people listening where you, you leave home and you forgot your phone. <laughs> and you're like a mile or two miles and you go back because yeah. you you feel like um, I can't function without without my phone, uh, no. but it's it's just, we have to kind of fight that and and, uh, and enjoy and savor these moments, especially if you're a other. parent or a grandparent mm -hmm. and you want to capture the moment and you miss out on living the moment. Right. So um, my my son and I had a conversation about that. Uh, so there, he and his wife are are trying real hard to. Uh, to make sure that they uh, enjoy these these precious moments. Well, I know I've met people and know people that where one of the whether it be the husband or the wife, where they're just this constant picture taker. Where they were never they had thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures of the family, yeah. but they were never participating. They were always behind the lens. They were never in the picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> and that's just not something that yeah. you know. That's not the conducive. Do you to have any family. pictures with, with Hannah in the picture? Oh yeah. Okay, because she's taking these pictures now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Well, she as I said, she likes to be behind the camera as opposed to in front of it. Well, we got to um, get her in front. Yep. She can do it more yep. often. Yep. So what a tremendous, uh, what a tremendous uh, pleasure it's been and, and an honor to now have uh, interviewed you for the second time and to take that joy and that smile and that passion that you have for life and to, to share it with my listeners. And you were even, and the listeners don't know about this, but you even dedicated your time and energy for the John Jay Toastmasters group that I did. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. And they were they were appreciative for that too, and so I, you know, for all of it, Sonny, for all that you've done for our community, all that you've done for me and my family, I, I just want to say oh, thank you. You're very kind. You're very kind. I thank you very much for uh, for the invitation, and uh, I congratulate you once again on wow. I mean, <laughs> you. I hope you have a recording of your first show 
compared to now because I mean it, you're, you're you're a pro well, there's no you, question sir. about it thank you sir well um, it's been my pleasure so I want uh, all the listeners out there to uh, just be appreciative for the people that we have the opportunity to stand on their shoulders um, as somebody's been so gracious to me so everybody go out there and make it a great day thank you thank you Riley.